Neuroscience is, at the moment, the area of exploding knowledge. Okay? Used to be atoms, and then outer space. Now you don't even hear about outer space discoveries really anymore. Then the DNA. We cracked the human genome in the 1990s. Um, now we are discovering the brain. We've learned more about the brain in the past 10 years than we have in all of human history. Um, a lot of that, or some of it, finds its way into marketing, and finds its way into the media, and gets misreported, misrepresented, um, but it's exciting. There are more Nobel Prizes being given in this area, and that's really nice saying that when I'm here in Norway, of course. I'm going to talk about why do you have a brain. Um, why does your brain have 100 billion neurons? Why do you have memories? And then about feelings, and feelings is the important thing. The memory stuff I'm going to go through fairly fast, feelings. And um, the talks that I could understand had feelings. People misuse and use the word emotions, but um, the, it's better to talk about feelings. I'm also going to suggest to you, this is the third time I'm doing the talk. And funny enough, the first two times people came and thanked me and said this is a brilliant talk. Now, normally you get about 10% of the people you present to being nice and they come and say this is a good talk. And thank you. But there were more people than normal. So obviously it went down well. But a lot of them said, um, you know, you've given me a different perspective on my job. And that confused me. It was young people. Football, you know. um, and I started analyzing this. And one of the things that I realized is we have talks here where we use words like we want to convert people. We want to influence people. We want to motivate people towards our brand. We um, are going to seduce them subconsciously. We are... Yeah, all those types of words. And those words leave a bit of a funny taste in the mouth. It's as if we want to make people do things that they don't want to do. We make them irrational. And what I'm saying in, in, in my talk, and you'll see that as the subtext in this whole thing, is that is not what we are doing. What we are doing is we are giving people the opportunity to live better. We are giving people the opportunity to feel better. That is what we are doing. And that is a much more uh, something that's nice to do rather than all this little mucking around here. And I'm going to work from neurology, and I'm going to work to feelings. And you will see why what we do is enriching people's lives. You know, you know, I started off in advertising in the 1980s, and at that stage, the common joke was, please don't tell my mother I'm in advertising, because I told her I am a piano player in a whorehouse. And that was very much the attitude towards advertising, and I think it's got worse. <laughs> you say in advertising, people start telling you about ads that are seducing you and ads that are creating all kinds of problems. So that is a subtext, and I hope you see that as we go. Why does the consumer have a brain? The clue is in, on, in those slides. Can you, why do you have a brain? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you thought about that. I'm sure it's worried you quite a lot. Now, all of those things have brains, and the answer is, everything that moves has a brain. Okay. I'll give it to you in a different way. If it does not have roots, it has a brain. Make it more personal to you. If you had roots, if you evolved with roots, you would not have had a brain. Okay? And that goes all the way back to everything. Um, so why do you have a brain? To move. The word move comes from movera in Latin. Movera in Latin is also the root for motivate. Okay? 
That's why you have a brain, to move. Not randomly, to move, to have a motivated movement towards food, away from food, whatever, to survive via movement. And what you're doing all the time, and what all those little insects are doing at the same time, is they're just trying to survive a little bit better. There's this process of trying to survive a little bit better, that there is progress for communities, for everything. It is why consumers, uh, they want to feel a bit better. And that comes all the way back to the basis of the brain. Just put your hands like that. Think. You are holding 600 billion neurons in your hands. 600 billion neurons. There is only 6 billion people on Earth. The Internet is now just sort of gone past 2 billion people on the Internet. And you are holding 100 billion. Sorry, I overstated that. The, um, that is more than the stars in the Milky Way. That is um, just about the biggest thing that you can think of. It's all squashed inside your head. Now, that is what you use to feel and what you use to think. The issue now is so you would think, and we always think that we are the pinnacle of evolution. Therefore, these things should be one of the final things that came up in evolution. Let me explain to you where they came from. Can we play that video from there or do I press advance? No. Our brains are composed of three central elements. Neurons, the cells that transmit information from one place to another. Synapses, the connections between neurons. And the circuit, the specific pattern of connections between the neurons. Without any one of these, our brains would fail. Without synapses, neurons couldn't transmit information between them. Without neurons, there'd be no electrical activity. And without a specific circuit, no meaningful computation can be performed. Another wonderful example of irreducible complexity. So how did it all evolve? First came the neurons. A neuron is simply a cell that transmits an electrical impulse from one location to another. The electrical impulse is simply a passive wave of ions. Once started, it will propagate through the cell on its own, just like ripples on the surface of a pond. All the cell needs is a means of starting such a wave, and a means of using the electrical wave to do something useful. In order to start an electrical wave, an ion channel is needed. Ion channels are proteins in the cell membrane that allow one or more types of ions to move in or out of the cell in response to a particular stimulus. DNA sequences reveal that the ion channels used in the neurons of animals had their origin in bacteria, where they were used to regulate ion concentrations inside the cell. At the opposite such basic electrical signaling evolved even before the appearance of multicellular animals. The single-celled paramecium generates a voltage change when it bumps into an obstacle. The wave of ions travels across the cell, reversing the beating of its cilia, allowing it to change direction. Early multicellular animals, through gene duplication, mutations, and natural selection, co-opted pre-existing ion channels originally evolved in bacteria to produce protoneurons to accomplish just that. Over time, the family of ion channel genes would have enlarged, allowing for more specialized functions, such as the active propagation of electrical waves known as action potentials, without which organisms could never have achieved the size they did. If you think about that single-celled paramecium uh, when it was running around,